just stop. These are the two words that I heard constantly during my six year battle with gambling addiction. To my friends, family, and everyone else around me, gambling just wasn't a problem. So when they heard that I was spending six to eight hours a day compulsively gambling away all of my money, they would always be confused and never understand why I would ever put myself through that. Now, I'm not here today to make any excuses for my past. I made many mistakes during my active addiction, but I am here to explain why someone like me can't just stop gambling. But who am I anyway? Well, you clicked on this video, so it means you probably know me, right? Right? Anyways, I'm Rob and I'm recovering from a gambling addiction. I made my last bet on November the 12th of 2022, and now I create these videos to help you avoid making the same mistakes with your life that I made with mine. I want you to smash that subscribe button to avoid going down that dark path that I was once on. Or if you're already knee deep in the crap that is gambling addiction, subscribe to learn how I stop. Or just stick around till the end of the video because it's exactly what we're talking about anyways. Now, contrary to popular belief, telling someone with a gambling addiction to just stop isn't just unhelpful, it's oversimplifying a really complex issue. Gambling addiction isn't merely about the desire to win money. It's about the brain's chemistry and the powerful grip that it has on us. Let's explore these three key reasons why just stopping is way more complicated than it sounds for us. First off, let's talk about dopamine, the brain's feel-good neurotransmitter. When we engage in things that bring pleasure into our lives, like gambling, our brain releases dopamine, creating a sensation of reward and reinforcement. For those struggling with gambling addiction, the allure of dopamine becomes a driving force. Each win, near win, or even the anticipation of gambling triggers a massive surge in dopamine, reinforcing the behavior as a good thing. Imagine being caught in a cycle where your brain constantly craves that dopamine rush. It's not just about winning money anymore. It's about chasing that high, no matter the cost. In fact, it doesn't actually matter if you win or lose. You'll still get that rush. Losing just leaves you with a lot of consequences to deal with after the fact. For some of us, it gets so bad that we don't want to get our dopamine from any other source because it's just not as potent. Someone struggling with a gambling problem might miss things in their life like family parties, dinners with friends, or even going to the club, all of which are filled with dopamine because the pull of gambling and the hit that it gives us is so intense that everything else pales in comparison. So if someone asks a gambling addict to just stop, it may feel to them as if they're being asked to give up the only source of pleasure in their life. Something that if actually true, would be a ridiculous thing to ask someone. Secondly, let's discuss the concept of tolerance. Similar to drug addiction, gambling addiction often leads to tolerance. The need to bet more money or spend more time gambling to achieve the same level of excitement that you once felt. As people become more entrenched in their addiction, they develop a tolerance towards the effects of gambling. What once provided a thrill now feels dull, prompting people to increase their bets or at least seek riskier forms of gambling. This is exactly what happened to me. When I started gambling, I was putting a few dollars on my local teams, and by the end of it, I was spinning slots in my pocket, and I knew the amount that the spin had won or lost based solely on the sound that played through my headphones. I didn't even have to look at it because I had spent so much time playing it that I knew what the sounds meant. As this tolerance is built up, the amounts and the thrill, the tolerance towards the dopamine release continues to build up as well. So if you were to just stop, the dopamine that you're used to is so much higher than everything else that giving it up can lead to feelings of withdrawal or depression. I remember how bored I was when I first quit. Everything seemed completely pointless. Of course, in due time, your brain begins to reset itself and you begin to find pleasure in little things again. But it's not a quick process. It's the exact reason why so many gambling addicts will only be able to go a few days or weeks before going back to the bet. To us, it can actually feel like a life or death situation because we're so used to living our life at that 10 out of 10 thrill level that the regular four out of 10 day seems intolerable. Lastly, let's address the stigma surrounding gambling addiction. Unlike substance abuse where physical symptoms are visible, gambling addiction often goes unnoticed until it's too late. The shame and the embarrassment associated with gambling addiction can prevent people from ever seeking the help that would change their life. In fact, only around 4% of people with a gambling problem ever actually do something about it. Instead, most suffer in silence, trapped in a cycle of despair and desperation, thinking that they're gonna get out of it with a big win. When people tell us to just stop, 
we may have a hard time expressing what is actually going on in our brains. Because to an outsider, we're being financially irresponsible, weak-minded, and lacking self-control. But to someone who's going through it, we realize how deep it actually runs and how strong of a chemical dependency it truly is for us. The fact that some get it and some don't usually keeps people convinced that it's not a real problem, just that they need to change something about their gambling to fit in with the crowd. But the truth is, a gambling addict will never be able to gamble responsibly or normally, because as you just found out, we are chemically hardwired to seek that next hit. It's never about the money. It's always about how the money and the anticipation make us feel. So what can we do to help those struggling with gambling addiction? First and foremost, we need to recognize that it's a legitimate mental health issue and not a moral failing. You can't force someone to change, but you can point them towards the resources that will help them quit once they realize what's going on. I dive into the steps that I took to quit gambling quite often here on my channel, and they can be summed up in four simple steps. One, find alternative things to do with your time. When I quit gambling, I needed to fill six to eight hours per day that I was previously spending betting on sports, looking up games, and spinning slots. So it took me a really long time, but making this content is something that I do now. Going to the gym, hot yoga, trying to read more, journaling. You have to fill the time with something you enjoy that's leading to a worthwhile purpose. The second thing is to limit your access to your money. I didn't trust myself with my money in the beginning of my recovery. If I had access to my bank account, I was going to find a way to gamble it. So I had my family manage the bank account and I only carried physical cash because I was an online gambler. That never bothered me. Next, you need to limit your access to the casino itself by doing self-exclusions or if you want to use something like Gamban to block gambling apps and websites on your devices. And lastly, go to support group meetings. I thought that I could do this on my own and in fact, I didn't even think it was a real problem until I started going to meetings and talking with people going through the exact same situation as me. It made a huge impact on my life because now I had a community to keep me accountable and I had a group of people who were going through it so they could share what was working for them. What works for me might not work for you, but those are the four steps. And if you want to take a deeper dive into how exactly I've gotten myself to 480 days clean from my gambling addiction, then check out this video. Even though it's specifically targeted for sports bettors, it's the same four steps to quit regardless of what type of gambling you're hooked to. Thank you for joining me today and let's keep learning more about this addiction and getting better together one day at a time.